what's going on guys welcome back to the channel just wanted to get back on topic man you know recruiting uh, early signing periods come and gone we did pretty well a lot better than people expected us to do um, considering the names that were out there and you know how people were kind of leaning and stuff like that we have to get a few surprises and and crouch and uh you know, he's really the big one that we got huge 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 get for us but want to change gears and talk about the oc search i think this is very very important something that we haven't talked about much hasn't been really any news leaking on that and we kind of anticipated that more news will be coming out after the early signing period and i think that more will come out um, as the nfl regular season ends we'll start to kind of get a little bit more details um, kind of into what's going on so you know first thing to talk about is kendall bryles not coming here he took the job at fsu and so you first off you you take note of the fact that Pruitt never even offered the guy the job. Okay, Pruitt didn't even didn't even want the guy. I didn't think he was good enough mind for him. And you know what? I won't disagree with Pruitt there. I think you look at what Kendall Browse has done, you say, okay, he's had some success offensively, but where has he had success at? The Big Twelve. Nobody plays defense out there. You know what I mean? You could probably take a high school offense and go out there and put up, you know, twenty one points a game with literally a high school team. Um, you go out, you look at uh what do you do at FAU? Okay, yeah, great. But who in the world do they play? You know what I mean? Then it goes out there against Houston, or, you know, it goes out there with Houston. Um, again, who do they play? You know what I mean? Um, so he's had good numbers, but against lesser competition, I'd say. But then there's the other side of it where you say, well, I mean, he is doing it with that same level of talent. As, as what he's playing against but I mean I still think it's kind of to be determined it's yet to be seen if that type of offense would work in the SEC I'm not convinced it would necessarily um, and then you uh, you know so I, I was thinking if you, if you look at it you say well I mean how good of an offensive mind is the guy really um, you know he obviously didn't impress Pruitt Pruitt didn't offer him the, the job so I mean I think that tells you all, all you need to know I think that us as Tennessee fans need to put our trust in Pruitt. He's shown that he knows what he's doing. He's a guy, if you listen to him talk, um, or, you know, he's a guy, when I first heard him talk, when he first took the head coaching job and, you know, it was announced and made public, and I heard him talk, I said, this guy gets it. I said, this guy gets it. This guy's a football coach. He knows the game, and he's going to lead us back to the promised land. And he got me so excited about Tennessee football that I went as far as to make a YouTube channel. I started a YouTube channel because of that guy. Because I believe in him that much. And some people just get it, you know, and Pruitt gets it. And, and, and that's something, too, you hear a lot of Tennessee fans, whether it be social media or maybe you see them out, you know, in public or whatever. They're so quick to bash Tennessee at every wrong turn. Like this OC search, for instance. You know, it's a, it's a whole other dumpster fire. Tennessee can't can't hire a coach, yada, 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 you know, fire the administration, get a new board, all this stuff. Um, we go out there, we have like the number 17 recruiting class for a while. Oh man, Pruitt can't recruit. What's he doing? Yada, yada, yada. You know, we go out, won five games last year. Oh, this, you know, this, this staff can't coach, yada, yada, yada. You know, it's, it's frustrating. And then their reasoning for why they always are so quick to nitpick at every little thing that Tennessee does is that I've been a Tennessee fan my whole life, and these last 10 years, you can't blame me for feeling this way. No, I can blame you for feeling that way because if you look at the last 10 years, who have our coaches been? Okay, okay. after Fulmer left, okay, it was it was Kiffin. Kiffin has gone in the right direction for that one year he was there. Okay, we're doing great. Okay, then we had Dooley and we had Butch Jones. Okay, if you can't listen to those guys talk, listen to how they articulate themselves, listen to their beliefs and their morals and their values, and if you can't tell that they don't know football, then you'll understand football. Okay, if you can't listen to Pruitt and realize, hey, this guy gets it, this guy knows what he's doing, um, you know, this guy understands the game, then, sorry, there's a wreck over there, guys. So, I mean, if you can't, you know, listen to Pruitt and understand, hey, this guy gets it, this guy's a great football mind, this guy knows what it takes to be a champion, if you can't listen to him talk and get that, then you'll understand football. I hate to tell you that, but it's true. And so what I'm getting at here is you should not have a lack of confidence in Pruitt. He has done nothing to exude 
any reason for us to not have confidence in him. The guy gets it, okay? He understands what he's doing. And so the fact that he didn't rush into a bad hire and this hire, the first blow uh, off the side of the road, didn't go hire Hugh Freeze, who's going to leave after one year, didn't go hire uh, uh, Kendall Browse, who really hasn't proven himself, you know, in, in, in against big-time defenses yet, you know, didn't go out there and just hire whoever he could. He's actually waiting and taking the time, being poised in this. And his first his first opportunity as a head coach, he's showing the poise and the maturity and the character to take his time with this decision. I think that he's doing a great job with this hire here. And I think we need to continue to trust him because he gets it. He gets it. Now, who do I think it's going to be? If I, had to, if I was a betting man and I had to put money on this, I'd say it's going to be Steve Sarkeesian. You better believe it. I believe it's going to be Steve Sarkeesian. Now, is that who I want to be our OC? I don't hate the idea of that. I don't think it's going to be a terrible OC for us. I think he'll be successful for us. I do. And he was successful at Washington, successful at uh, USC. Um, you know, he wasn't good at, at Atlanta. That's fine. There's been plenty of coaches who were good in college but weren't great in the NFL. It's just, you know, it's kind of the way it is. You know, it's, it's, it's a different game. It really is. It's a different game. I think his system would work in college. It, it's shown that it has worked in college. And so, I mean, I think that he's definitely a serviceable enough OC for us to be successful, especially once we have good players in there. So, I don't hate the idea. Um, I think he makes the most sense in terms of the fact that he's available. Right? When you, when you, when you look at the hot board, you look at potential candidates, I mean, really, I don't know anyone besides him. Maybe Matt Canada. Him and Matt Canada. That's about it. Who else is there? Um, you know, you, you have to figure him and Pruitt. They know each other from coaching together for a little bit. And Pruitt loves loves working with guys that he's worked with before. With good reason, too. You know, that's a that's a, that's a good thing. You want guys that, that you know and guys that, you know, um, you can see eye to eye with. So that's good. Get guys to fit in with your staff and all that. Very important. Um, and I think it's going to be Sarkeesian. He's going to be looking for a job after he gets fired next week. Um, after the Falcons play their last game. And, you know, he's, uh, I just think he's going to be our guy. I really do. And so, you know, if it's not Sarkeesian, I'll be very surprised. Um, you know, I would expect to hear some news coming out in the next couple of weeks, for sure. The next couple of weeks. Definitely should start hearing some news, start hearing some rumblings. You know, Pruitt to interview Sarkeesian, whatever. Pruitt to interview so-and-so. I mean, the rumors should start back up here after the holiday's over and all this stuff. We should start hearing some more stuff here pretty soon. But, I mean, I'm willing to bet money that it's going to be Steve Sarkeesian. And that's great. We get our OC, we move on. And we're, and we're, and we're, and we're, and we're back to talking about recruiting. How we're going to finish up this recruiting class. I think we have a chance to finish it up very strong. Um, we're in the running for Henry Tua Tua, Tua uh, Tua, Tua, however you say his last name. Sorry, no disrespect to you. Just don't know how to say your last name. Um, big time ball player, number two, I believe number two outside linebacker in the country, according to 24-7 Sports. I watched an interview um, of this kid, I believe it was like back in April or something like that. And he, uh, he was talking to somebody. And uh, the guy was like, yeah, you plan on take, who, uh, where are you planning on taking your visits to? And he was like, I think like the first thing he said was definitely Tennessee, for sure. So, I mean, the kid has been high on us for a while. People just haven't been talking about it very much because we were losing and stuff. But it's looking like it's down to us and Bama. We'll see who pulls it out. I think that would be huge for Pruitt to get a, get a recruiting victory over Nick Saban for a very, a, a very highly coveted recruit would be huge. Um, done a great job beating out Kirby Smart for um, Aubrey Solomon, the D tackle transfer we got from Michigan. And if you can get one, uh, get a big victory over Saban, that'd be huge as well. Um, and uh, you know, I think he'll be a big addition to us. And then um, we may end up getting Chris Bogle, who's number three weak side D end of the nation. I think he's considering us too. We're in his top four. So we'll see how that goes. So, you know, there's potential for us to finish this thing off really strong, potentially get into a top 10. Maybe we add a big-time receiver. You know, don't want to speak too soon. I mean, Jaden Hazelwood, maybe. Highly doubt it. But, hey, he did put us in his top five. So, I mean, it's a possibility that nobody's really talking about. 
Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's just going to be interesting to see how it all plays out, man. But I, I trust what these guys are doing. I trust Pruitt. Excited, excited for the future. And I uh, just can't wait to see um, how everything unfolds over these next couple weeks with the OC and, and, and with the recruiting. But, yeah, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on it. Give me your comments below. Um, and just want to keep this conversation going.